Have you ever been on a server and watched as another player was banned by the server's anti-cheat right in front of you? You may not have thought about it that much, but there's actually a lot that goes on behind the scenes to help keep cheaters away from ruining your experience. In this video, we're going to be diving into the complex world of anti-cheats, how they're made, how they work, and how false bans sometimes happen. There's a lot to unpack, so sit back, relax, and let's get started. To understand how anti-cheats work, you first need to understand how clients communicate with the server. Your client is your game, and the server is a network of players, like Hypixel for example. Clients and servers use packets to help communicate with each other. Packets are pieces of data that contain information about the player or the server. There's over a hundred different types of packets that exist in the Minecraft protocol that enable whatever actions are being done on your screen to be displayed to all of the other players that are connected to the server. For example, if you're connected to a server and you're moving your character around, your client sends movement packets to the server. The server reads the movement packets that are being sent to it and sends display packets to the other players that are around you in response. This allows other players to see that you're moving your character around. Packets are always received by the server in the order that that they're sent from the client, otherwise there would be massive problems with what you're doing on your screen and what other players see. There's mainly two different types of packets that exist, inbound packets and outbound packets. Inbound packets are packets that the server receives from the client. For example, if you attack another player on a server, the server will receive inbound packets that contain the information that the player has been attacked. Outbound packets are packets that the server sends to the client. For example, when the server teleports a player, the server sends outbound packets to the player's client that contain the information of where that player should be teleported to. You can think of it like driving cars on a two-way street. Some cars are traveling from their homes to go to work, while other cars are leaving work to go back to home. In this analogy, the cars going to work would be inbound packets, the cars leaving work would be outbound packets, work would be the server, and homes would be the clients. The transfer of inbound packets and outbound packets are what enables coherent networking between players to exist on a server. Anti-cheats utilize inbound and outbound packets to detect when a player is using a hacked client. Anti-cheats are composed of checks. Each check will check if a certain part of a player's gameplay, like their reach, velocity, or CPS for example, exhibits packet behavior that wouldn't be possible in the vanilla client. There's two types of anti-cheat checks that exist, logic checks and heuristic checks. Logic checks compare the behavior of inbound packets being received by the server with the behavior of the same inbound packets from a vanilla client. To put it simply, logic checks use the packet behavior from an unmodified client as a reference when analyzing the inbound packets being received by the server. Here's an example. On a vanilla client, when you attack another player with a sword, the server receives both a use entity packet for the attack itself and an arm animation packet for when you swing your sword. On a hacked client, you could attack another player with a sword without sending an arm animation packet to the server, letting you attack the other player without your sword swing. A logic check would know that it needs to receive both a use entity packet and an arm animation packet from the client with every sword attack, and if the attack is missing an arm animation packet, the logic check would determine that those attacks are coming from a modified client. I know this isn't the most practical example because realistically, who would want to cheat that lets you hit people without swinging your sword, but it's a good example to explain how logic checks work on a basic level. Logic checks typically include reach checks, velocity checks, and speed checks, just to name a few. Heuristic checks, on the other hand, run algorithms to determine if the packet behavior from the client is humanly possible by looking for patterns that wouldn't naturally occur. For example, a heuristic check for an auto-clicker would analyze when a player is left-clicking by observing when arm animation packets are being sent to the server from the client. If an arm animation packet was constantly being sent exactly every two game ticks, which would be the case if you were using an auto-clicker that clicks at the exact same speed with every click, a heuristic check would recognize that as a pattern that doesn't naturally occur and is most likely the result of an auto clicker. Heuristic checks typically include aim assist checks, auto clicker checks, and certain Killora checks, just to name a few. Anti-cheats usually contain several dozens of checks to monitor any aspect of the player's gameplay that could give them an unfair advantage. With that being said, there are some cases where an anti-cheat check is falsely set off, which can result in a false ban. Logic checks can go off by mistake if they forget to account for a specific action. For example, a logic check that analyzes whether a player's movement is legit or not could forget to account for when that player uses an elytra and collides with the ground, resulting in a lag back or a false ban. When it comes to things like movement, there are so many different scenarios scenarios that affect a player's movement that logic checks have to account for, so examples like this aren't uncommon. With heuristic checks, since they rely on detecting unnatural patterns to be set off, heuristic checks are never 100% accurate. Unnatural patterns are possible to be replicated on a vanilla client, they're just unlikely. To put it in speedrunning terms, it's like killing 20 blazes and getting a blaze rod drop from every time you kill a blaze. It's not impossible, but it's extremely unlikely, unless you have dreams luck. False bans from heuristic checks usually occur when the packet behavior from players exhibits patterns that are unlikely enough 
out for the heuristic check to deem them as unnatural. Some heuristic checks are too strict to the point where many players get falsely banned from them, while other heuristic checks are too forgiving to the point where hacked clients can easily bypass them. One of the many challenges that anti-cheat developers face while creating a heuristic check is to minimize false bans as much as possible while also being able to catch as many cheaters as they can. What separates good anti-cheats from bad anti-cheats are the amount of checks that they have, whether their logic checks function properly, and how balanced and accurate their heuristic checks are. Anyways, that's pretty much all you need to know about anti-cheats at a basic level. I can't really go into detail about how certain checks function because I don't want to give players any ideas on how to bypass them. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my Lunar Client cosmetics down at the description below. Each and every purchase of my cosmetics does help support me as an independent content creator and enables me to make more videos like this one. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.